Oh, hello friend, thanks for joining me for a video blog. It has been a while since I actually did my regular video blogs. I've been um, sharing a lot of videos through Zoom and just making Facebook Lives and sharing messages to support you, support people through this crazy times that we're living right now. So I decided that it's time to um, bring back my regular video blogs, my, you know, tea time, coffee time with Alex Gill to talk about, um, have a casual conversation about some big stuff. Um, so I miss having this connection with you. And today I want to talk specifically about pain, how to navigate through difficult times. Um, and of course, the reason I want to share this video with you is that many people, even before you know, this, this virus came in all this violence going on in our country right now. It's just so much going on. But let's say that we all are living our lives and going through transition, through transformation, through pain, through suffering. So everything can be amplified. All those emotions can be amplified because of what's going on in the world. So I want to share a message here, um, about suffering and, um, I think it was last year I was reading a book that gave me a great definition of despair. Despair is that, is that feeling, is that emotion that can lead to depression, is that feeling of being totally helpless. Feeling, the feelings of helplessness leads to despair. And the definition that I learned about despair was suffering without meaning. In other words, if you're going through some suffering because of a divorce, a loss of a job, an illness, and you don't find meaning about what you're going through, that's what it can lead to despair. And I think, I think it's a very important message, meaning, you know, I was just coaching a client who is going through some, um, some tough times right now because of a relationship in her life has dissolved and there is anger, there's betrayal, uh, there's a lot of sadness. So it's a lot going on. And we just had a deep conversation about find meaning because we need to find meaning in our suffering. And if you follow spiritual teachers or great teachers like Elizabeth Lesser, I'm going to pull a quote from this book because I'm here to recommend your book. If you're going through a lot of tough times right now in a personal level, and of course everything gets amplified because what's going on in the collective, because we're all connected, I want you to find meaning in what you're going through right now. And I really want to, to seek healing, seek transformation. What is healing? Healing is accepting that pain, accepting the sadness, accepting the shame, accepting the guilt, whatever comes up for you, be with that emotion, have tea with that emotion and bring self-compassion, bring self-love because the truth is we all have done things that we regret. We all done things that we wish we would have done differently. We all, um, we all made mistakes and we are all learning. All of us are learning. So it's time to bring compassion and love because that's how healing begins. And Elizabeth Lesser in this book says, in the time came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. And I think this is a quote, I don't necessarily know if it's from Elizabeth, but it's a quote in her book and I'm gonna read it again. And the time came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. So what this message means is I know a lot of people know they need to heal, know they need to do the deep work of the heart, and yet they're not doing. I had a conversation with a friend yesterday was sharing some personal stuff about, you know, uh, somebody in her family going through some crisis and that's because somebody's not choosing to do the healing work and I just see so much unnecessary suffering because people are not doing the work to heal their wounds to heal their hearts and it makes me sad and sometimes it makes me even angry I want to grab that person and shake it because that becomes more painful that painful staying tight in a bud becomes bigger than the pain that's gonna come by 
doing the work, doing the healing, because if, when we're doing the healing, we we facilitating, we adding movement, we adding um, that force, that 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 force that's necessary for us to evolve and to grow. And you know, I used to say that, and it's not my saying; it's it's I read somewhere that pain is necessary and suffering is optional. And the difference, the main difference between pain and suffering, is this pain is something that we go through. We go through when we have a divorce, have a breakup, get disappointed with a friend, lose a business, lose a client. So we, we, we have pain. Pain is like we're going through right now with a lot of people dying and, and you know the injustice happening in our country. So pain comes from that. And we need to feel that pain. We need to feel that pain and constantly seek for love and compassion so that pain can also dissolve. But suffering, it's much deeper. Suffering happens when we choose not to deal with our pain because that th those trapped emotions that are causing the suffering emotions energy emotion if we're not allowing those emotions to move they can heal they can be transformed and energy is not created or destroyed energy is transformed and that's what healing is it's transformation and it doesn't have to be difficult as many people fear that it is talking to a therapist, talking to a coach, grabbing your journal and just sitting and facing that whatever pain is, make a choice of heal. Break your heart open, broken open. How difficult times can help us grow by Elizabeth Lasser. So if you want to start doing this, this healing gently, start reading a book like this, but read a book like this as you are, um, as you are studying, not just read and then you know, a week later when you're done with that book, you forget what's in the book. Take a book like this as, as a spiritual teacher and do the work, do some journal, do some reflection and start forgiving yourself. Because a lot of the suffering that I see people going through right now is because they are angry at themselves, they carry a lot of shame and, and guilt. And uh, it's time for forgiveness, it's time for compassion, it's time for self-love because that's how we're going to make this world a better place. It starts from us. It starts with our inner work. So it's more important than ever. And I've been sharing these messages for the last few weeks. It's more important than ever to do this work, to bring self-compassion, self-love, self-forgiveness. So you learn how to do this towards others. Because we cannot give to others. We cannot give to the world what we cannot give to ourselves. Not authentically. Not in a powerful way. So I'm here talking to you. If you need to heal your heart, this is the time. If you're feeling sad because you lost somebody, feel the sadness. And it's amazing what happens when you allow yourself to feel because when you sit with that pain and you allow yourself to feel, I tell my clients, that's all you need to do. The rest of the work, the healing takes place by, by divine power. You just need to surrender to accept and start like peeling off the layers. So one thing I'm really learning as I'm approaching 50, I'm entering my fifth year and I was just doing a little bit of reflection when I was working out and I realized my 20s were a time that I was trying to belong, to fit in. I was dating a lot, I was you know, trying to find a place of belonging because I never felt I belonged. I was still in Brazil. I never felt I belonged there. And I was just trying to be normal and fit in. Well, then I was 26. I was pretty unhappy and I decided to start my hero's journey. I heard the call, come to United States, and I started the hero's journey. So then the mid-20s was really about finding myself. And then the 30s came. In my 30s, I went to sleep. My 30s was about me getting lost. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So the 30s to me really feel like I got lost in the forest and I didn't have a great teacher. I didn't have anybody to guide me through that path. So that was my 30s. And then my 40s, the entrance of my 40s, the beginning of my 40s was marked by finding a new call, the hero's journey of becoming a coach was marked by um, 
a broken heart. So my heart broke wide open and it was the beginning of my journey towards self-love and self-compassion. So my 40s have been about really know who I am and who I'm stand for and what I want my life to look like. So now that I'm entering the fifth, the fifth year, and I think the fifties for me will be really about um, embodying this knowledge that our journey here in this, this life is not to acquire more, it's not to acquire knowledge from outside, which I've been doing a lot, and it's okay still to do it, but it's to really embody the concept that all the wisdom and knowledge that we need, it's right here. And our work becomes about letting go. Our work really becomes about traveling light, about dropping the beliefs, the structures, the thoughts, even people who are not in alignment with our hearts. And it's really about choosing consciously to live in a state of joy. Live in a state of joy. And even through pain, we can find the joy. Because if we find meaning in our pain, in our suffering at times, even then we can find the joy. Even then we can look you know, ahead into our future, future that we want to create, and find some kind of positivity and faith in gratitude, and gratitude is what softs everything. Gratitude is when you start going from that stiff, that hard heart to a softer place. For me, it has been, in, entering the 50 has been a lot about softening the heart and really about going deeper. So I spend more quiet time. I spend more alone time, more time reflecting, more time journaling. And I think this is what the 50s are gonna be for me a lot, about like, living in a pure state of bliss and joy, even when things are hard. So I wanna share this with you because all this came to me as I was working out and I'm like, it's time to turn the camera on and share with you. So um, check her book, uh, Elizabeth Lesser. Schedule a call with me. If you wanna explore what healing can look like for you, emotional healing, spiritual development, spiritual fitness, emotional fitness, schedule a call with me and see if I can help you. And if I'm not the right person to help you, I might have somebody in my network, I have a dream team, they might have somebody that might be able to help, but the message is healing is needed. Healing our planet is needed and our healing begins right here at home. So thank you so much. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you.